Uh, I'm not a fly attendant. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, Jason. Jason was one of you guys. Uh, only a few days ago, a few years ago, and uh, so, so yeah, uh, she graduated from here. Uh, she got a degree from textile te textile and also industrial design. And uh, she has been working for Nike for quite a few years. For the last ten years, she has been the, the head designer for LeBron shoes. It's a very important shoe for for Nike. And uh, and also was interesting. I found this on the website. So it was from nineteen no not the twenty fourteen. Okay, twenty fourteen seven years ago. So they did, they have the website. They identify the most important successful people in the footwear industry, right? And that was seven years ago, things already been different, but oh, we can see that some ideas. So they were interested in where they went to school. And of course, the big one of them, Bill Knight, co-founder of Nike, right? He went to uh, University of Oregon, but not far down from the list, we have <laughs> this guy, Jason, right? And, uh, She's even more successful than seven years ago, but textile and industrial design at the State University. We are very proud of him. And, uh, and uh, so again, he was one of you guys. And uh, now he's one of the most iconic footwear designers in the world. So we are very excited to have him here. He flew all the way from Portland, Oregon to the last time. So it's a wonderful opportunity. And uh, just to remind you that uh, this was Jason uh, sketch card when he was a student here that he took a sketch card with Professor Tim, Tim Bui, right? He found this sketch last night. So this was his sketch, his, his assignment. You might think, oh, you might be doing better than him right now. It's good. It's time people need to improve. But he was pretty good already when he was a student here. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to let the welcome Jason. Boy, I uh, see that sketch. I know, uh, Professor Boo, you were telling me about that earlier. It's crazy to see, and I remember working on that project, and I'm, I'm sure you were like back in 2013, draw something other than a shoe. Mm -hmm. I think that was the uh, vacuum thing. Project. See, I was telling somebody about the vacuum thing, and I just was trying to get a shoe into basically every project that I could. I still have the drawing of the spot vacuum cleaner, too, in, in, the, in the portfolio uh, back home. I remember running across some of it uh, a few months ago, so I still hold on to a few of those old ones. Um, yeah, so like the kind words from, from Lou just a moment ago, I, I'm not used to be one of you guys, I am one of you guys. I mean, I, I don't get to come back to North Carolina nearly often enough, but I appreciate your time here. I know you guys are all busy and a lot of stuff to do, so I um, appreciate some of your questions and seeing you guys in some of your studios and stuff earlier. It's just really um, just an awesome inspiration for me and just to be back uh, amongst really um, NC State family. So, um, or a great introduction, so I don't need to spend any more time on that. Let me see if I can just get behind the of college and then we'll get going. So, uh, College of Design, which has changed from School of Design when I was here. I mean, all right. I mean, this is like a huge, yeah. Like, same thing in, in my uh, neck of the woods. It's like you, you get everything ready, and then when it's time to go, tech fail. Which is exactly what's happening. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's like a few other issues with this. Uh, with the long way to get it at all. I'm not sure as far as uh, oh getting the red up any frogs. Yeah, we got sides good, but wait. Yeah, we're just going to do it. Yeah, thank goodness for them walk slow. <laughs> it's all planned. So we have some little technical issues, so students could come in on time. It's all well planned.
I mean, it should be kind of just get stuck on the on the just opening the. I've had that problem before with the deck. It may take a minute. I might have to go back through all this. Okay. My key on it. Bear with me. I apologize. We set it up. We we did look at it earlier and made practice. I promise we kept it ready to go. So I blame Matt. <laughs> I, I have not been there in the last, I think last time I was over there was like uh, 2016 or so, but I mean the difference. It, when I I went over right after the new library was built, you know, it was just insane. And they always said it would, you know, like this is going to be bigger than the I definitely appreciate them. We're, we've been doing a lot of, we've done a lot of work with them in recent years. So hopefully they'll be growing and letting us do it. Have you guys been um, doing this in your design class? No, we, we just, uh, those are the knitting facilities and a lot of just the textile innovation. You know, there's just a lot of things they were doing that just kind of right in line with the design uh, and then really pushing the bar forward. You know, yeah. getting back into the and just learning. Things like the RG and whatever. Obviously, the textiles can trace that. But then just, just bringing in that expertise. Um, but it just helps us get there. Okay. Okay. eternity ago, uh, clearly, um, but I work at uh, Nike and Nike Basketball. I've been there since 2003. Uh, I've been in basketball the whole time, mainly because that's what I always wanted to do as far as uh, you know, just in running shoes or uh, aerobic shoes. I always just wanted to do basketball, and luckily I've been uh, fortunate enough to kind of follow that uh, through my career at Nike, but um, it was kind of a long journey, a fun journey, and a little bit of a different journey, so hopefully I can share a little bit of that with you guys today. Uh, along with a couple of, I'm not going to say insights, but just maybe lessons and little tidbits that I've learned along the way that uh, uh, have helped me out and maybe could be something that, that um, you can bring into, into your experience and maybe it's something to do or something not to do uh, when you decide. Uh, but I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, used to just basically doodle shoes on the side of every uh, page I could or doodle, you know, wars scene or helicopters or whatever um, until... I saw this thing, um, and I was in seventh grade, and uh, you know, I, I had no exposure to any kind of really culture. You're just a kid you know, going to a junior high school. Um, some some cool upperclassmen had on these with a full, you know, kit to to go with them, matching and stuff as we did back in the day, and my head exploded. Like everything changed that day, and seeing like just the whole thing come together from the 
technical beauty of this shoe, still my favorite shoe of all time, this Air Trainer 3 SC in the Medicine Ball colorway, uh, designed for Bo Jackson. I know you guys probably don't care about any of that stuff, but this thing changed my life. Um, he calls that day, and I tell people this all the time, it's, it's a little bit of a, 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 a um, distortion of the truth, but I did start drawing shoes in Mr. Moore's class in sixth period that day that I saw those. And it hasn't been every day since, but I've drawn, sketched a shoe pretty much pretty close to every day since then in one way or another. Um, so, you know, being on the lookout for signals and not being afraid to be inspired by things, uh, even if it's something as dumb as a shoe, I think is... is a lesson I learned early on uh, and have built uh, a career around Tommy's outfit that day, which he has no idea who I am or what happened, but I can, I could, uh, if I could draw well enough, I could draw his whole grip that day. Uh, and it really, it really affected me. And I feel like um, what, what pulled me into that world was the ability to touch um, people in the same way that, that not only Tommy and his wearing of that shoe did at the moment, but what so many athletes and moments have done since then, whether, you know, growing up with Michael Jordan, um, but now with LeBron and all just the various things that have happened between them, like, you really have the opportunity to um, touch and move culture, um, which was something that was like just really attractive to me at the time. But it was still kind of ethereal. He had the shoes, this cool kid, money. I, you know, I had no idea how to, how am I going to get one of those shoes or make one of those shoes? Like, I couldn't get them, so I started drawing them that day. Um, but there's no way, I was, my mom's in the audience, there's no way I'm going home and asking her for a pair of $100 shoes because I would have no place to live um, after that. But she did come through Christmas 1988, and I think you can see the text right there says you can see my face. I'm not going to read it, but I think the eyes say everything about what that moment meant to me. And that's when it really became real because uh, the summer prior to that, I sold my entire G.I. Joe collection for $65 and went down to um, a local shoe store and bought a pair of Nikes and wore them to death and probably begged and pleaded for these for an entire year before you know, they became a surprise on Christmas morning. And being able to put those on my feet and uh, feel the feeling that I had been kind of aspiring uh, to feel since seeing those air trainers really like was a paradigm shift for me and also culture at the same time. You know, my, my job is, is very much tied to culture, and culture was very tied to sport moments. Michael, Scotty, the Bulls, Bo Jackson, you know, all these heroes that were kind of um, being culturally cultivated at the time, a lot through Mike, but, you know, Donnie Wilkins, you know, all these guys are ancient granddads now, but were basically huge influences to me. So, uh, you know, I would take that, and I would literally uh, draw collections of shoes, um, you know, once or twice a semester, I'd bring them into school and we'd flip through the notebook with some friends and like, ah, this one sucks, that's cool, like, we just had fun and, and talk about shoes. But it was, now looking back at it, it was great practice and all of the market research that, um, again, we still do today in different ways. I got my first real job kind of doing, uh, extending it that same way, just showing people drawings, this time on the internet, but that time on the internet. But it all started with just like a passion a love for these sneakers that came out of nowhere because it's fueled by culture um, that I just had to chase down uh, some kind of way, which led me here. So the foundation of, you know, my career now and just learning about how to be a designer. Uh, I'm sure my mom can attest to this. Like, there was no internet. There was nobody to ask. Uh, I had no idea how to be a shoe designer. You know, our best guess was engineering. You know, it sounded about right. And uh, so I applied under engineering in, uh, at, at NC State um, and, and got in actually under undecided, uh, you know, kind of a little workaround. I'm, 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 I'm just trying to get in, just get me in and we'll figure it out. And through the grace of God, honestly, uh, you know, one of the, one of the uh, guidance counselors that worked in that program directed me into textile technology and design as a way to take design classes uh, without the big uh, kind of really scary thought of putting together a portfolio, which I didn't even have any clue what that was, much less I put one together that would impress you know, a real design school. So what it did was allow me almost a back door to get in and learn about design, experience in classes, and also textiles and fancy textiles. Right? Pretty much makes sense, right? So um, was able to uh, take some, some of those courses and through, uh, you know, as Professor Blue was just saying, every time I could shoot shoes, shoes as a way to practice, but also could I think a little bit differently or could I use some of that problem solving um, 
I don't know, to create a new shoe instead of just sketching a little something with my friends, how can we apply this really technical advanced knowledge into making a product? So through one of those classes, one of the professors, her name was Sherry, I hate him, I don't remember her last name now, but she was my one-on-one -on -one teacher and she had worked at Rollerblade um, at some point in her career. And she saw me drawing shoes for every uh, project and was eventually like, my guy, I know you love shoes. Clearly, that's what you want. Let me hook you up. Let me put you in contact with a friend of mine who works over in Converse because clearly you're not going to let this go. Um, so I'm going to try to help you out. And, you know, I think we all, you know, as you go through uh, life or your career, whatever you want to say, these little moments that, that maybe might not seem like much can turn into these huge, these huge deals that, that really change everything, much like that little brown shoe. Um, her directing me to Dave Stender and Converse started, got me an internship that really, again, another huge phase change. And so the first thing that I always like to tell young designers is be an intern. Like, if you get paid, which I did, is awesome. If you don't get paid, cool still. It's all about the experience because what that internship did, I went to Converse right after graduating undergrad and uh, it was automatically like, oh my God, like this is how you do that. This is what how you can apply that skill. This is what they were talking about. And at the same time, you're mixing it with stuff you love and you're learning from real professionals. So much so that it made me realize I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I needed to go back to, to school to maybe learn a little bit more about how I could um, advance those skills to keep up. But I think like, being able to come back to school with that mindset um, leveled up not only my skills but my confidence i mean you just learn so much so if you guys get an opportunity um to be an intern or just to, like a co-op or being able to learn from in a professional environment whether corporate or just you know uh, a place where you can even just practice that skill in a, in a real setting i mean it's invaluable at least in my experience it's something i highly recommend and it's also a great way to just get a job because you know a lot of times those internships will transition into uh, work right after that because they're going to need you I'm sure you guys hear all that all the time, but from, from real world experience, for sure, do it if you can. It's a, it's a huge benefit, will be a huge benefit to your career. Uh, so I, I interned at Converse, came back to school for a little bit, and then that's when I started posting drawings on uh, I think Nike Talk, a message board, uh, just as a way to like show shoes, because I couldn't do it in every class. So it would take some of those marker skills, some of these um, 3D skills, whatever, post online, and uh, I was always writing Nike as well. Ever since I was a little kid, that seventh grade, I would write them letters. Hey, Nike, like, you know, I want to be a designer. Can you send me some shoes? Or I don't even know what I said, but they would write back. Like I had letters, type letters of correspondence where these poor people in Beaverton, Oregon were writing, you know, typing out letters to this kid in North Carolina. But that, I was like, whoa, that's like, uh, they're paying attention, right? So um, I kept writing letters now through email. Um, posting stuff on Nike Talk, writing letters. And um, I started attracting a little bit of interest from the from the uh, industry and got a call from uh, Fila, which is a shoe company out of Italy. Uh, they make their brands everywhere, but they're based in Italy. Um, called, I don't know, late morning and offered a, a job, paid, a paid opportunity to design shoes, paying for you know, a car or a place in Italy. And I was like, okay, yeah, awesome. And maybe an hour or two later, Nike called. and. Uh, if they would have called first, things might have been different. Might have went straight to Nike, but because they came second, uh, I had already accepted the opportunity. But I told I told Nike, hey, I, I won't even call them back, bro. Like you know, like I'll just roll with you guys if you want. Uh, but they were uh, they were uh, smart enough, I guess, to say no. Listen, we know you have already been writing us letters for God knows how long. Go do you know? This sounds like a great opportunity for you to basically practice your craft and get some experience and be able to live in a different culture and we feel like that's going to make you a better designer in the end if you're still interested in, in working with us um, as you go through your career just keep up and, and, and holler at us basically you know and so um eventually through that time at, at fila it was just like okay i was i was wearing filas i mean i was wearing nikes out of swoosh tattooed on my arm everybody kind of knew that's that's where i was headed and the, um, it just seemed like the right time so i made a couple of phone calls and Went through a little bit of a strange interview process, but eventually um, Nike flew me out and got to meet with, you know, all of a sudden you're thrust in front of these legends um, that for me, who I've been basically studying or vacuuming up 
every bit of information I could, whether it's Tinker Hatfield or Eric Avar or you know, these, these guys that had done these, these shoes and products that blew my mind. Um, Tinker designed that brown shoe that I still have. Actually, both of those shoes. Um, what eventually led me to Nike, right? So, of course, I took that job as soon as they offered it to me. Uh, I think uh, mo most of my friends and family knew I was going to end up in Oregon for them uh, at some point. So, I had to make that jump. And this is what our campus looks like now. It's, it's not the biggest photo I could get. It's a rendering of some of our new buildings, but it keeps it's so much bigger than it was when I was there. But it's um, basically, I'm lucky enough to work in a world class facility with everything at your fingertips that you could want to uh, create your you know whatever your imagination can come up with whether that's uh, 3d quantum studies or you know just absolutely getting after it with sample making or exposure to the best testing equipment um, that's available whatever it is the resources are, are provided so that you can just go full bore on your creativity um, but that's now you know coming coming in there you're just a, it's a huge corporate you know behemoth right and a lot of pressure but when they let you into Nike basketball and they give you a little bit of the keys of the things that have been driving you uh, and, and you've been dreaming about you know, for so many years, it's like, all right, let's let the fun begin now. Let's, 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 let's get the film started. So experience is the best teacher. I mean, those are pretty common saying, but I, I don't know any other way to say it other than getting in, making some mistakes, having some successes, um, and just letting, letting it fly. I mean, I, I still, you know, to this day, uh, it's something that, that in our design kind of ethos there, you know, we're really pushing the limits, especially in basketball. Like, we want to make you feel uncomfortable. And I don't mean uncomfortable on your feet. I mean, like, well, I'm uncomfortable with what I'm looking at. I don't know if this is okay, you know, kind of thing. Um, and we really just dove into that. And these are just a couple of projects before. Yeah, there's some LeBrons and some before. But it's all about what I hope you see here is fun, you know. like, And it was having a great time with design teammates, learning, learning about building a real product, learning about production, uh, realities, uh, profit realities, and also cultural moments. Um, you know, some of these shoes that are up there ended up being kind of an athlete did something huge in them or an entertainer did uh, that ended up just, just making a mark. Uh, and even working with, I mean, the shoe is with the red thing. That's a Megatron shoe. I love Transformers. What? I get to work with Transformers and do something for Megatron? Oh my God, it's crazy. It's like dreams collide. Um, and just have fun with it, enjoy it, you know, that's the thing. It's, it's a job, it's real, and there's a lot of pressure, but if you're not having fun designing, like what are, what are we here for, right? Like that's gotta be the joy is what makes it good. I mean, when it becomes work, it's trash um, in, my, in my opinion. So that brings me to, I think I mentioned this to, to one of the classes earlier. This is the first kind of point I, I'd love to get across. And that, again, it's simple, you know, listen, I'm from, I'm, from the country, so I'm a simpleton. But don't settle in your design world, or you know you can you can take that uh, even larger too. And a couple examples for me, um, really, just going at the sheet of paper, right? A lot of times we'll get to something and we feel great, right? Ah, yeah, I just nailed that joint, like I got it. I'm good for class tomorrow. This project, I'm gonna wrap this up. However you're feeling, I, you know, I think we have a tendency to, yeah, you feel good. You yourself on the back, mission accomplished. Um, something that was told to me early on in my career is like, yeah, Jason, I wish, you know, this sounds great. I wish you would go back in after you feel like you finished and take another look at it, see if you can push it further. And I'm going, well, that doesn't sound like the lazy approach that I would like to take, uh, but okay, I got it. And now it's something that I, that I do every project, even if it is uh, in my mind killer. And at this point where, you know, I kind of, you kind of have a feeling of what's, what's, when it's finished or not, it, has, it always pays off to look again. You may not touch it, but usually you'll want to move a little something and you'll get to a better place. Um, so you can look at it in that just literally down on the one project you're looking at, but I also think it's a larger, there's a larger component to it too, um, because the advice was handed, apparently I settled a lot back then, but uh, it was handed down to me a little later um, in a larger sense, as I had had some success, I had you know several shoes in the market, you know, you got an apartment, you kind of roll in, you got a car and everything. And, and you know, these these guys, designers, I don't mean to say guys, but these people around, they've been around a while, they're looking at you like, you haven't done anything. You know, I've been here 20 years. Um, you, you, you're just a little wet behind the ears. You think you got something, but you got a couple of shoes. And so he came to me and he's like, listen, I know you're feeling great, but don't settle. There's so much more you can do. You can be a better leader. You can improve in so many areas. Like, 
and you're just scratching the surface uh, career-wise of, of what maybe you could accomplish. And it's like, yeah, you know, like it's cool. To, you know, we want to enjoy it, but it's like, don't. I guess uh, you spend too much time on your laurels or feeling like you really accomplished it or mastered it. You're probably missing an opportunity to uh, to further uh, both your knowledge, your experience, uh, or just the product that you're trying to the product or the expression that you're trying to build. So a simple thing, but you know, in the back of your mind, I think for me the most daily application of this is just looking at that project and like, I think I'm done, but you know what, I'm gonna go to sleep or I'm gonna go away for a couple of days, whatever it is that you need to do to take a break so that when you look at it again, you're like, you see it differently. You know, sometimes it's seeing it as, you know, a pile of trash and sometimes it's like, oh, if I just move this here, this is gonna move it, you know, to a whole different, a whole different level. Um, so, you know, take it for what it's worth, but it's always good to push beyond what you when you think you've done, even if it's just for a tiny, a tiny little bit. But because of that not settling with doing inline, what we call inline, which you know is kind of your um, traditional, uh, you know, everyday gigs. I don't know, you know, a lot of stuff we do is inline, but you know, you transition uh, from eighty dollars to ninety dollars to a hundred dollars. So all of a sudden, now you, you, there's business counting on you, right? And the more that they can count on you, the more they will heap on you and the more responsibility, which is a good thing. I mean, that's, if you want to have your vision out there, the more resources and, and people you can get behind it to make that happen uh, is usually a, a, a good thing. So because of that, uh, it led to being able to work with this guy, um, Mr. James. And I, uh, I thought I would take you through the process of a couple of shoes I've made for him and just talk about that. Um, and, and then we can, you know, we, we can just have some questions or, or, or whatever you guys want to do, have a little discussion after that. But um, I think by pushing myself, by continuing to raise the bar and work with the team in new ways, incorporate the team, it led to the opportunity to design the LeBron 7, which is the first shoe I worked with, with LeBron on. Um, this is the LeBron 8. And so to talk a little bit about the process here, you know, you can see up there transformation, which was the story for this shoe, and kind of the brief. And that came from the athlete. Uh, so now we're getting down to like solving problems for a specific athlete, which is basically what I do every day. Um, and so when he talks about transformation, like, uh, okay, there's a million things you can you can do with that, right? Um, and and at the time, we still do a little bit, but we we were talking about this notion of attack, uh, attract, engage, and capture, which I think is you can say it in maybe different ways, but I, I think that's a really important. Um, component of any good product design because obviously you want to attract folks to the product and you want them to be engaged with it and then you want them to not put it down. Um, so that's, you know, in this case, we were thinking of it as the 50 yard read, uh, you know, getting up on it and then holding it in your hand or putting it on your shoe. So how do you, and how does, how can you transform these experiences? So what's the problem? You know, that's what we start, we're problem solvers as designers, right? I mean, that's really what we're here for. And you have to excuse some of the imagery on here. Obviously, this is this is a pretty old project, like 10, 11 years old, uh, but the process is still very similar, which um, is kind of why I started here. So what's the problem? Um, LeBron transforms through the season. He's not the same player at the end of the season that he is when you start. So if you're making a shoe for him uh, in October, his body, his team, his mentality, his focus is all going to be different come playoff time. He's, he's in better shape. The team is running together as one. Um, they have a mission, and uh, from him, his insight was, man, playoffs, all the bright lights are on me. I want the, just, I want it to be the craziest thing you can make so that I can show it off, but it also has to be a great performance thing. So we looked at, like, how does his how does his body and his game evolve through the season, and how, how can we evolve the shoe with it? So what you see here is a, a, a track and gauge capture. LeBron's obviously we call him is the lion, uh, so that's why we use the lion here, but... Um, and as you see through the, the, the cars down below, this is all the same model car, but it's an evolution of performance, going to lighter weight, removing panels um, to get to this ultimate performance machine for the track in this case, or for LeBron, the playoffs. And I mean, these ain't that much better or different than the sketch from uh, that they showed earlier, right? I mean, it's, and the big thing, and you guys already know this, it's getting your idea out. I, 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 Y'all can probably all draw better than I can. Uh, it's just a matter of illustrating it and getting, bringing people along with you. And I, I feel like that's going to be um, kind of the case everywhere you go, unless you're working for yourself. But the more you can build that army and convince them 
that the mission you're on is is the one to be on, the better off you're going to be. So I mean, this is literally those are the notes I was taking to an ideation session um, and rough sketches that just led to this rendering. Um, and it was one of those moments where you know I think we were we were here. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Like this feels like the move. We should, we should be straight here. And no, let's keep pushing it. Let's keep pushing it. And it eventually led to three different models, a different, uh, how, how, you know, and the shoe evolved from being this heavy leather um, kind of take in October to a very lightweight rocket in uh, come June. And, and part of getting there is failing. Like uh, we always say, fail fast, fail forward, whatever it is. I just say try and try again, and don't be scared to fail. Like I, it's not a, it's not really even a failure. I think it's just sometimes that's the time we look if something isn't as successful or if maybe something didn't turn out um, exactly the way we had in our mind and maybe it's a failure, but most of the time you learn something from that, right? It's gonna um, improve either that project or a project down the road. So if you can fail faster so you can learn faster, that's cool. But as long as you're not uh, repeating old mistakes, falling backwards, falling into a pit of like just doing the same dumb thing and you're, you're, you're failing as you try to progress, I feel like you're, that's, progress it's it's not a failure so you can see a couple really this is how we work once we get out of that drawing stage i mean this this white shoe that's in the main picture i uh you know we saw that red ring they're like all right jay go to asia we'll see you when, you, when that shoe's done and it was literally a three or four week stint uh in taiwan myself and one other guy trying to figure out how to build this thing with no nobody there really to, to mind us. And, and it was just unbridled creativity in the sense of let's come home with something that, that, that blows everybody away with this transformation process. Or transformation, yeah, I should say. And uh, so here's the three versions of the shoe in the end. Um, game shoe, this is when LeBron went to Miami Heat, by the way, um, so that's why they're all black and red. But this is for the start of the season, it's leather, Nuba, it's heavy, full Air Max to Christian LeBron. This is all stuff he talked to us about. He was he was in Cleveland when we started the shoe. Um, so we were making big jackets and everything. And so you want something to go with the bulkier clothes. You come into training camp. Of course, he moved to Miami where it's all shorts and T-shirts uh, before this came out. But I think it still applied to, you know, there's, there's New York and Chicago. I-95 still really identify with that feeling. But as he went through the second part of the season, this shoe removes weight panels to new construction uh, that allows you to get a little closer to the foot. The ride underfoot's the same, so he can, uh, he's not having a weird change in the middle of the season. He can he can rely on it, but now the shoe's lost a little weight. He's going to feel a little faster. He's going to feel a little bit more freed up, potentially. And then where you get to this for the playoffs, where we really, you can see there, the red coming through from the middle, we take them out lining. We're taking, it's literally like you would look at an aircraft where they're combing out the airframe. And, and taking the same silhouette and applying these different thoughts to it was just a fun way to get after different insights. And it's almost like three different shoes in one. Um, but the process of working through sketch, through sampling, through working with an athlete, um, through final revisions and final product was, was something that uh, we really pushed the boundaries on and ended up being this, which is uh, the, the South Beach LeBron 8 um, turned out to be kind of a cultural earthquake, I guess, and really something that led our brand to a whole different way of thinking about releasing shoes and what we bring to market, and also how we color them. Obviously, this is very bright, very Miami, um, but, you know, <laughs> we proposed the shoe at the very beginning of the process in this a very similar color, I think red instead of pink. And, Everybody was scared to death. You can never make a basketball shoe in teal. Well, what are you thinking? Like, we'll never sell that thing. But come like eight months later, LeBron's gone to Miami. Things have changed a little bit. We frame it up with a little pink and the Miami Vice thing and, and throw it up, and it becomes the hottest uh, hottest thing in the world at, at the time, at least for us. So it's, you know, you never know how you're going to get there. Even there's mistakes in material in the shoes, like the factory messed up, put the wrong material on for production. Hey, it looks cool. Let's just leave it, you know, and, and uh, who knows what would have happened if we would have kept the material that we intended. So being open um, to both other experts and, and whether it's the, uh, the guy living me help in Taiwan or the color team who's got this feeling that this color is going to be it. Trust us. Um, you know, it takes a village. And, and if you think you can do it yourself, maybe you can, but you can probably do it better with, with a 
that team and was behind you and on the same mission. And hopefully you have the opportunity to create moments um, like this for this in, in my career really allowed me to do a lot of other things and continue to grow and take on bigger projects and have the confidence of a brand that we could take on this LeBron business and carry it and do things where we're really serving the athlete and the consumer and delighting them, uh, which is what we always say, surprise and delight. Um, just like a kid when they get a new toy, you know, like it's, I still like that when I get a pair of shoes, but you want to make sure everybody's good. Like that. So, um, and so imagine wild success. This is a little bit of the results of, of the, um, you know, what went on that year while he wore the shoe, whether it's playoff battles with D Rose, destroying the Lakers on Christmas day, rest in peace, a great Kobe. Um, and even Kevin Durant wearing the shoe, um, because it crossed over and it meant something to so many people, but imagine wild success is something that, uh, our design director told us at the beginning of, um, you know, kind of this product cycle. And us as a team, we kind of joked at first, imagine wild success, what do you think we're doing? But it's like, no, take a second, really imagine wild success. Imagine a championship, imagine a building named after your athlete, imagine a teal shoe that, you know, everybody's just climbing over themselves to get. Like what happens if you really imagine wild success, not just success, but like what does wild success look like? And, uh, you know, it sounds a little weird, but that's all I try to imagine now. It's like wild success. It doesn't always happen, but what it does is open up these crazy ideas that maybe somebody wouldn't have, you know, it just gives you the fuel to think outside of the box a little bit. And so hearing that from a design director who's usually, okay, we gotta get it done by now. You see, you need to put the guardrails up. It was really freeing. And it's something that we continue to live by as a team uh, when we build stuff, uh, just based off of him kind of casting this one direction at us that kind of surprised us. We joked about it for about a day, but then took it serious and used it to galvanize us, galvanize us as a team. And the results um, kind of spoke for themselves for several years after that, just on a, a wild tear uh, of success with basketball because of that group think and leaning into trusting teammates and having quality teammates there that all care and were on the same mission. Um, so, you know, this is a, so I don't keep you here all night. These are a little bit of the projects since imagining wild success. This is LeBron seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you know, all these years of his career, uh, it allowed me to, to participate in these, these projects. So for me, uh, imagining wild success in, in, in that one, uh, arena, that one shoe LeBron eight, it's kind of has allowed me to, to successfully navigate through, you know, uh, territory that rarely, uh, in our industry, um, you know, somebody achieves just because of longevity and being able to continue to bring stuff to the table to a culture and basketball culture moves so fast, um, that it is relevant. So I think part of that is just every season I'm a new designer when it comes to that and design has changed. It's like every season my ears are open to the players, to the consumers, to the experts in the room so that we can create something else that could be wildly successful. And you really have to, when you start thinking about business too much, oh, we have to, we're gonna have to make, have the same success we had last year, blah, 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 whatever. No, we gotta blow that, we gotta bring something nobody's ever seen before. The success will come. Don't worry about these numbers. Don't, don't tell me about, you know, these nitpicky things. We have to move the needle. And so, I don't know, be confident in doing that. Move the needle. Another, uh, is another kind of little tidbit that I take with me every day. And this is from the man himself, LeBron. Keep the main thing, the main thing. And that's kind of what uh, that page before you illustrated. I think. It was every every season, I'm a new designer. The main thing is, you know, most of the time it could be LeBron, but there's certainly been other projects you know, throughout my career. And if you can get distracted by, you know, comments on the internet or by negative feedback from, uh, you know, design leadership or, you know, stuff at work just uh, just with um, being in a corporate environment like the the more that you can kind of keep your focus on what that project is or your 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 main goal is and just like let the other stuff fall away if you miss some meetings so what you know like you'll have new meetings all day long every day if, if they let you up you know but the thing is if you, if you keep the main thing the main thing then what's important is always going to be at the forefront and if you're building that people are going to go with you you know like they're not going to mind you missing the meeting if the end result is something that's just super dope. 
Um, so I don't know, keep that in the back of your mind. It's easy to get distracted, especially in this day and age, but as you're working, you know, like keeping that focus, and it could be something for just a month, it could be something where it's long term. I think just coming back to that and not letting too many things get into your mind's eye to where you can really just pour out where what where, where you know, the stuff from your heart where you where your designs come from. Again, these are super simple. I'm, I'm sorry, I wish I had something a little bit more profound to say, but uh, the main thing, the main thing is, is, is something that works for me for sure. Um, so fast forward 10, 11 years from the previous project I showed, this is the LeBron 19, which is um, kind of the most current project that, uh, that you know, kind of we've been working on that's ready for release. Uh, and this is kind of our newest LeBron about to come out. And maybe you can see a little difference in the level of, of output from that first sketch, you know, where it's just a couple of raw notes and you know, the last year um, with one rendering, a bunch of sketches. Now, obviously, the, you can see some of this, the sketches are still pretty much the same, but we're dealing in much more realistic and, and high level renderings of presentations and data to give to our production partners so that they're making a more accurate representation of what we want and just being able to control things down to literally the pixel and a lot of things that we we create now is is just a huge uh it's an evolution that's happening everywhere in design but certainly one that's affected us a great deal so this is all about art and science innovation elevation rabbits alternate universes we worked with Rose bunny on this another thing i talked about megatron i don't i think the only other thing i like as much as transformers are looney tunes and uh, growing up watching that on saturday morning i get to share that with my son now and it's you know i hear him cackling away the same way he did whenever he Cindy Sam gets hit on the head with something or whatever, it's still great. Um, but in, uh, being able to work with the studio for Space Jam really allowed us to work in an alternate universe. This shoe had to exist in a in the serververse in a movie before it was ever going to exist in anybody's hands, including LeBron. So what does it mean in that world? And how can we bring that from the screen to your feet? And for us, it's like we want you, we want to bring the like we don't want one cartoon one and one in the real world, it should be the same. So Combining art and science is something we do all the time, you know, innovation with a little bit of that style is kind of a lot of the bread and butter uh, in the fashion industry or footwear industry. When you start bringing in all these other, you know, entertainment influences and everything, it just becomes a much more fun and, and interesting ride and it helps us create differently. So creating with different partners uh, took us further, right? So just a little bit more insight to, to how we'll make it. These days, you know, back when I was making eight, I wasn't getting images. You know, I just get some lions chasing down some prey. Now we're really like looking at form direction, material direction, color direction, graphic direction, and spending time with the design team, you know, years out ahead of the product. I mean, I started on, on the tech for this shoe in about three, three and a half years ago. Um, and so it gives you time to mine it, you get together, you all come together and like these were, you know, I didn't pick these out. These were all kind of decided as a team and how we were gonna go about it because they were inspirational um, and the teams rallied around it. So really bringing in that village uh, because you need it. I wouldn't have come up with that stuff on myself by myself. You know, like, because of their expertise in the arena, they were able to bring this valuable information uh, to the group that we could all work on together to spin new products right? or new, you know, new expressions. Um, so this goes back to the, the, the other page a little bit more. And again, I, I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of the texture of how it doesn't have to be a super clean, dialed in rendering every time, right? It can be, it's just getting your idea and your thoughts out. This is just me thinking on a page. And this is, you know, culled down from a ton of sketches that we, that we did and, and just trying to put some of the more interesting ones on the page. But, um, you know, things like this pretty refined, right? As, as far as the line work goes, but that concept is super raw and early. Like that was three or four years ago. Um, we had that early and they're like, oh, it's just not right. Go back into it a little bit. What does it need is, you know, like push yourself a little bit more. Go back into raw sketching and, and really pushing the idea of, of what that innovation could be, combining innovation, that art and science together. Um, it's a big part of the job, storytelling around it. Again, pulling in resources. I didn't. I didn't come up with that system. I helped with it, but it's like I, I don't. I don't know how to make an airbag. You know, like I'm not a scientist. Um, but we're, you know, we work with the scientists to be able to to implement those things. So it's like never would I thought I was. I would have to uh, 
delve that deep into the technical manufacturing details of retaining air in a form, which is very hard to do, by the way. Um, but I, I, I could probably do it now based on learning uh, from, from these folks. So you like, you'll, you can bring so much to your experience um, by just listening to them. And I know engineering and those kind of things often forces at odds with, with design and just the way that uh, what their job is versus design. But getting on the same page, everybody's going to, I keep harping on that, but it just makes such a huge difference. And teamwork, I think anywhere you guys go uh, in the future, it's, it's it's more so now than ever, especially in the design community working as a team. Um, it's, it's really the only way to go. So, you know, a lot of that sketch phase, so finally we get to what we call line work, which is kind of black and, and white illustrator drawing you see down there. Um, I'm sure you guys, I guess you would say use Illustrator. I know I, I, we use it all the time. It's super powerful. It's pretty much the only tool I use because the Illustrator is very Procreate um, these days. Um, thank God for Procreate. I just knew all this was going on, by the way. Um, but basically, once we get to that line art, now, um, you know, it's a little cleaned up. It's real. We can use it to, to send out to our partners uh, as far as merchandising, color design, uh, material design. You know, they just have something firm to work off of uh, as they help add their part to the project. Right? Um, and here's just a little bit of the engineering component. Um, you know, talking about working with uh, these specialists for us, so many uh, really, really crazy smart folks that work on this all day long. But a little look into the some of the 3D stuff that this was generated early that we want to work off of. And I just wanted to illustrate to you guys some of the things you'll, you probably are work on projects like this now you can do this here for us like uh this is a huge thing for me to be able to have to, to work off of because it's real proportions we know we can produce this um i know what the machines will do so i know you know it just helps to uh, see things a little bit more realistically we talked earlier about having something 3d in your hand versus 2d uh the sooner you can see it 3d i mean the better off for me that's where you know, things really start to happen <laughs> Uh, and speaking of 3D, you know, we work so closely now with 3D design that can almost ideate for us in real time from a sketch. You know, sometimes we'll have these sketch sessions and we're tossing sketches to the 3D designer to really sketch in 3D and pull it out and model uh, for us. So, so you're not just sketching in 2D anymore. It's really like looking at the real shoe and, and discovering these new forms uh, as you go along. Whereas 10 years ago, we're literally just trying to hack them out of the sketch on paper. It's, it's just really fast, really fun really powerful. And what you're looking at there is an exploded view of the shoe, which shows um, kind of all the technical uh, parts that go under it. And a lot of this is all fueled from LeBron, telling us he loves it. It really works for me. The insight always comes from him. The problem we're trying to solve for him is what goes up must come down. And I was like, I don't really have jumping. I just want to know that when I come down, I'm going to be safe, you know, and I'll be able to jump again. So this whole shoe is about making sure that he can come down to the ground and get off the ground again safely and quickly um, at his size, at his speed, uh, in an everyday NBA scenario. And hopefully, if it can do it for him, I can do it for like it. He's an everyday athlete and certainly performs for good uh, for them. So, if he would have told us he liked, uh, I don't know, plywood, um, this shoe would look way different, right? So, it's not just, it all comes from an insight of solving a problem. Again, getting back to the old project, solving a problem for our muse, which in this case is, is LeBron, and, or our customer, which in this case is LeBron. Um, so kind of that's what, what fueled a lot of that work there. So um, just to kind of a look at some of the ideation along the way, uh, as far as in 3D, and this is literally some of what I was talking about. Like we get a, a sketch or render done, and working with the 3D team to ideate on how that can come to life in this a big basket weave mesh, you know, we see it in 3D. It sounded like a good idea until we saw it in 3D, and they're like, that's not the picture from the future. It looks a little weird. Um, but basically got us to this final, this this final form over here. And uh, you know, now you start storytelling. This is looking at Space Jam 2 and how we approached developing that product. And it was designed in conjunction with them. We were in the studio um, with bugs, I guess I should say. Uh, but really looking at scenes from a movie you what, uh, two years in advance um, and deciding on colors and how it's going to look on the screen and what that world looks like and how that shoe could exist in that world. So you're seeing a lot of things really drawn up that 
high, it's crazy colors, it's almost alien looking. Um, but when you see it in the tune world, it almost looks like it belongs there. Um, so how does that translate? How does it link up? And this is working back and forth with Bugs and his team and really a new way of, of creating. I mean, we must have done hundreds with the color design team of that. What does this yellow and blue, how does it vibrate the right way? How does it look right with the uniform? Putting it up on screen, working with the director to make that come to life uh, for just a few seconds, you know. But in the end, it drove the whole form, the whole color, and a lot of the storytelling of the shoot. Um, and it all comes down to it. So, a couple of shots uh, of, um, of of the actual product, and then I got a little something that maybe could replace the spinning shoe in the hallway. Um, <laughs> This is the actual finished, uh, the actual finished shoe. Um, so you know, being able to bring something like from those, I, I feel like it looks a lot like those early drawings. Right, we were able to kind of stick to it and, and pull it out of Space Jam into, obviously that's that is just in the tune verse, but this is much more a home on a basketball court. You know, something or, um, you know, just in somebody's collection. Um, but I'll leave this up here. You guys are welcome to take a look at it. And I'll certainly leave them leave them with it, with with you, but. Um, you know, this is kind of, this is kind of what I'm doing now. And it's all because of basically my, I think last side, which is passion. And you've heard it said a million ways, whether it's, you know, dream big or follow your dreams or whatever. And I can say that that's all very true. But ultimately when I'm, uh, in my studio in the middle of the night, trying to figure out a problem, I don't hate it because of the passion, um, because I found something early on that. Um, you know, find something you love and do that for a living, and then it's never worked. Right? You've, you've heard uh, the variance of that saying. So if you can find that passion and come back to that passion, it fuels the not settling. It fuels looking at the page one more time. It fuels the reason to keep the main thing the main thing. Um, it it brings you back. It propels you forward. It keeps you humble. Um, and 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 it just you know for me it always you. you can easily get caught in the trappings of success, right? And flying around the world and hanging, you know, front row seats at a game and nice dinners or, you know, whatever it is. Really, ultimately for me, it's, it's pulling that shoe out of the box, whether it's for myself or for my kid or seeing, seeing somebody post a video online, even having somebody roast it, which happens all the time. I get roasted like 50% of the time and then I get killed. But it's funny, you know, it's cool because it's interaction and it's, 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 uh, Love it or hate it, you know, everybody's going to love everything you do. And that's all right. You know, like for me, if I can get 50% of the people hate it and 50% of the people that love it, that's like perfect. Um, because that discourse, that tension, um, you know, that's how you know you're kind of moving the needle. If everybody loves it, you know, I don't know. It kind of depends on where you're at. But if I show something and everybody's liking it or somebody in the wrong kind of pants is liking it, I'm like, mm. I don't know. We need to change something. Man. I don't know if pleated khakis if I can really trust what you say. <laughs> um, but but ultimately, you know, and I'm kind of known for this too because I am a little bit of a hard on my sleeve guy, and I've had the notion. I've had the you know, a few times where passion has has I've gone, I've gone a little too far. You know, when when keeping it real goes wrong, right? But I think I think in the end, if you're if you're um, honest about it, if you're true to that, and if you're trying to get to the right thing, uh, again, and doing it with your team and your team along with you, you're not going to be, uh, you're not going to be killed because, because of losing your, your cool in a meeting or because you missed a meeting or because, you know, because they know I get a lot, I get a lot of leeway because they know I'm passionate about it. I haven't heard, I haven't heard from Jay in a week. What is he, you know, should we be worried? No, nah, you know, we know he's going to come through because he loves this too much, you know? Um, so however you can apply that, even if it's just a little bit, keep that spark, keep that passion. Same reason you're here, same reason you, you know, go to class, the same, you know, I know a lot of you, a few of you I spoke to have, have thoughts about your own business already and like wanting to do these crazy, you know, amazing things. Like, don't be afraid to do it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. All that sounds cliche, but I mean, there's so many times along the way, like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, Jason, I don't think that's really the way it goes. I'm like, well. We're going to go that way and see what happens, you know, and, and a lot of times, again, if your heart is pure and the intent is not to, um, you know, the intent is, is good. And I always say find the truth in the shoot. Find the truth in what it is you're doing, whether that's solving that problem, you know, creating something completely new nobody's ever seen before, 
Uh, but to me, that wraps up the whole thing. You're finding the truth in the shoe. You're getting rid of, you're, you're on the main thing. You're following your passion. You know, you're failing forward. You're, you're doing everything you can to uncover that jewel that's hidden under all that BS, right? Whatever you want to call that. So um, if I could impart a little bit of that to you guys, uh, I'm here in the corporate world 18 years later, as passionate about designing my next shoe as I was when I you know, those drawing shoes and putting them on up on the Macintosh 25 years ago. Um, I, I can't imagine doing anything else. Designing is hard work. You know, it's it's not it's it's fun, but it, it's challenging. So uh, you need as much extra fuel as you can get, and you've got it already because you're here. So don't be afraid to tap into it, lean into it, and let it let it guide you. But don't let it go wrong. You know, like I've been I've been uh, I told you guys earlier I got fired from my internship at Converse because I was passionate. I'm in there yelling and cursing and like, what the hell are y'all doing? Meanwhile, I'm an intern, so they are, of course, like, you you one of this guy? <laughs> but, uh, but what's cool about that, and this is another, this isn't in the, in the slides, but I should have said this earlier. Be careful about uh, about your bridges. You know, the design community, the, the creative world is relatively small. Uh, I could have stormed out of that room i could have thrown stuff i could have been very disrespectful so could they have um, but they weren't and uh later on 10 10 12 years later the gentleman in front of me came to work at nike on the lebron team uh as my engineer and uh a great dude we had the greatest laugh about it because i learned from that you know those mistakes that i made in that corporate environment and uh, thank god i wasn't you know or neither one of us were terrible to each other because we had to work very closely you know and i've seen it happen time and time again so it's like learn your lesson you know be respectful uh, appreciate the opportunity we all have to create things and be designers because the world needs us and i think the more that we can apply that design thinking lose class about design thinking is so cool to me because now we're seeing um, as we bring in these teammates from engineering from accounting from marketing let's think about this in different ways like let's solve this problem together Let's open your aperture a little bit up to this way that designers think creatively. You can be creative in any industry. Um, and it's 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 really helping us do some cool new things and work together in cool new ways. So all that to say, follow your passion. It's not a bad thing. It's cliche, but it's real. Like I there's no difference from me to you. I was just drawing shoes for fun. And uh, I mean, I got a couple friends here that I, you know, they've seen me draw shoes and everything from a wall to a the backside of the server receipt when we were waiters, uh, you know, through class projects. Um, so now, you know, well, they don't ever buy my shoes, but, you know, <laughs> but seeing the shoes in the real world, you know, um, which I'm very grateful for, uh, you know, that support from friends and family on the way and from NC State and from just being able to come in and share some of this stuff with you guys. And I'm not much of a presentation or deck maker, so I tried to make that as long as possible, but I'd love to just talk to y'all and maybe answer questions or have a little bit more of an informal chat if you guys want to want to do that. Um, I'm here and I hope to be a continued resource for you guys. So, uh, as you go into the industry or press through school, if there's anything that, that I can do, I'll leave my information. Who has it? Uh, I, would, I would love to be a resource and I can make see the success that, that you guys bring. I can, I can see people in the room and the resources you guys have here, the new building, uh, you know, the collaborations, uh, it's just insane. The tour I took earlier, I was just blown away. Um, you guys really have some amazing um, stuff here to, to really create and, and push things forward. And it's exciting to see because you're, you're going you're gonna to change things too. And that's uh, it, hopefully a reinforce in me uh, and us out, out in Nike here soon. And I'd love to work with any of you. So anybody wants to come and move out for a rainy day or something? <laughs> come on out here. Tour guy. Uh, okay, so for someone in system footwear design, when applying to a footwear design position, would you recommend that the portfolio show variety in terms of products? So, like footwear and food packaging, or all footwear? It's a great question. Have we touched on this a little earlier in the studio visits? I like to see, I would much rather sit down and see uh, a presentation about food packaging 
the shoes. I've seen every shoe. I, we've probably seen, you know, and somebody's probably proposed it before. And I'm down to see a new one. I love shoes, but I think where you really will capture, you know, your whatever industry it is, if you're showing something different than what they make, you know, they're gonna it's just gonna show your breadth, your experience. And the, you know, you may want to show one shoe to just show you kind of can do it, you know. But the more you just want to see how you think. And uh, I've seen that every way from songs uh, to to you know just random sketches to poems um, to Instagram posts that, that led people to, to me. So I think I think diversity in that kind of thing is, is definitely. Uh, what does a day look like for you? Like, I'm sure there's lots of different parts of the design process, but like, do you have like tons of materials that you're kind of looking at for inspiration inside, or like, do you guys do three D printing at all, or all that? What are you it, guys doing? <laughs> it's so that's a great question, and I think the one good thing about being a designer is that you're not every day is kind of different, you know. In a, in a lot of cases, some days, you know, I'm grinding out on a sketch for most of the day. Some days I'm in meetings. All days. Some days I'm in a factory, literally like watching folks stitch a shoe together and like putting panels together to make sure um, that it looks like what it should look like. Or whatever. I mean, really like they're sweating and working machines and, and, and trying to figure it out as a group. And sometimes you're like hanging out, um, just vibing, having, you know, some food and talking about sports or whatever it is. Um, and we definitely, some days it's in the materials out there, or some days it's like working as a group in the studio. We're like, all right, everybody out. We're just gonna be in here, and the new thing is imagine wild success, whatever it is. And what, what does that mean? Go after it all day long. You got everybody in there from three D to uh, engineering to marketing to that's just throwing stuff at the wall. And we're looking at videos. We're checking links. We're, we're we're watching YouTube. We're like roasting each other. You know, it just becomes a whole thing where you come out of it at the end of the day with like, okay, that's how we're gonna get after it. So it's pretty dynamic, honestly, and, and because. Luckily, Nike has so many resources that yeah, I can spend a day in the materials library, or spend a day in the gym, or spend a day and just we have kind of a few what do you want to call it? Creative spaces, I guess, where you can just go and like makerspace, you know, just go and print T-shirts if you want, or go make some decals, or hang car, or whatever, you know. So um, there's it, it, you can tune and like tailor your own adventure a little bit, but there's you know there's plenty of corporate stuff, meetings, meetings and stuff like that. But I, I try to do as little as possible and spend as much time. Either vibing with the team, or you know, just being creative uh, with whatever projects or what kind of stuff. Sir, uh, calendar like give any type any type like I don't know what to do. And then advice to a young designer who gets a brief he doesn't like doesn't give that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever gotten a brief that I've liked. Okay. Uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but I've helped create some briefs that we love. So we do it collaboratively now, collaboratively now um, so that you don't get something handed down. To, like In a brief, I don't know, I, we're, we're talking shoe, shoe design talk here a little bit, but you know, a lot of times these projects begin with a piece of paper that's like $120, this kind of weight, here's your competition. Very uninspiring you know, in a lot of cases. And you're like, well, yeah, of course I know the shoe is $120. Like, give me something I can use here. But that's up to us, right? To, to put that spark into it a lot of times. So what we've started doing is creating that collaborative. Okay, we know the business needs, okay, we know the whatever whatever else it is, but what are we getting after? What problem are we gonna solve? What does that look like? So that and, and we present them together, we build them together, and that's part of getting that team on board early and like sharing those ideas and letting other people's ideas do the thing. Like Honestly, for a while, I didn't, you know, my early years, I didn't, I'm not trying to hear your idea about what the shoe should look like. What, what do you know? You know, it's like, but the sooner you can give yourself over to that, and we talked about this a little earlier, you know, Blue's course, it's like, it changes everything. There's so many great ideas, and it's okay if it's somebody else's ideas, if you're all working together and under the same mission. So that's uh, doing it collaboratively, collaboratively is kind of the, the key for us now, at least in basketball. And, our team is really tight and we get along really well. So building those briefs is like one of those opportunities where you're vibing and you're just talking about sports and like, okay, we gotta do this. What are we gonna bring to this kid? And what's what experience? And you just have a lot of, of fun. A lot of times you'll travel, you know, someplace and curate that. Um, we do a lot of dig trips, which we take take uh, 
somebody from each part of the, the process, and you all go together to New York. And you're there for a week shopping and meeting and you know, shop owners and eating and you know on your feet all day together. So that when you come back, man, you're you've been in the, in the trenches all week, ready to ride or die with this team um, and the vision that you've been talking about all week. You know, uh, and that makes things so much so much easier. Um, so I don't know. I would, I would I, I, and as far as it, it, advice for you know. Yeah, you're doing very well. I don't know that you uh, need too many. Uh, you're being able to work from North Carolina doing the same thing I'm doing. <laughs> I'm stuck in Oregon, so you might, you might have to figure out and need some advice from you. Uh, but I, I, I do think, I mean, you know, you're you're in a situation very similar to mine. But, you know, there's, there's corporate overlords. There's, you know, there's realities to the business. And it's just like, I mean, that could beat you down, you know, over the course of time for sure and get frustrated. And you got to just find a way to, like, Come back to that thing that got you, you know, yeah. got those shoes out in the hallway that made you yeah. want to draw shoes in the first place because you, you can't let them take that away from you. The everyday monotony of, of work can sometimes do that. Uh, but I don't know. For me, I just don't, I, I, I can't let that happen. So if that means, again, I keep saying missing meetings, but that was a huge thing for me. Right? Like, like I used to try to go to every meeting, gotta be there, gotta be there. And somebody in design, design leadership was like, uh, Oh really? You don't? <laughs> I can. Okay, cool. It's just an unlock that allows us so much more free time to be able to do what you need to do to get your work done, and not just going to meetings all day because you can do that. You can spend your whole day all week just going to meetings, and you you no better for it at the end of the week, right? Other than uh, being tired. So um, being able to navigate that's a huge thing. I don't know, if, you know, your personality will dictate that how you do it, but I think just not letting that get you down if you're stuck in that environment because business is business, and it. It, it can get tough sometimes, but you gotta still gotta stay positive, right? Still drive that energy because the whole company's gonna be looking to you. Like you, designers are the heartbeat of these companies. You don't have anything to sell without a designer, right? And, or a design team and that vision. And a lot of times businesses don't look at it like that, but you have to look at it like that. You know, your heart and soul. And I think when the rubber meets the road, they'll get right back to you. So uh, the first time I asked you a question was Chris Williams. He graduated from here four years ago. The full way designer Adidas in the audience is uh, John Lopez. He graduated from four years ago. He's a designer at Caterpillar. So this is uh, you know, some, some people coming back to the top. Can I ask more questions? Mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah, so you've talked a lot about like, your design team and the different departments you work with. How many people is that? And how does that kind of change throughout the process? Is it like an early design or it's more of a fashion? Like, I'm sure there's a lot of there. There, but like, just kind of roughly how many people are you working with? Yeah. That's a that's a, a great question. Uh, early on, um, let's say probably you know your more intimate design teams are probably like eight people, um, and you slowly it's like snowball, right? You start you, you bring in usually marketing comes first, a couple more people, development, engineering, a couple more people, uh, then you start involving production, right? And that's like huge color design, material design. I'd probably say day to day, you know, you start with those eight, 10 people and that's the core of it. But at one, at any one given time, it could be a uh, hundred people touching it, if not more, very easy. Uh, and that's not really even counting folks actually building the shoe on the factory floor. That's, you know, merch, merchandisers, you know, marketing, design leadership, your own design team and design partners, engineering development. It, it gets to be a lot of people really quick. And every one of them has an opinion. Um, so that's another thing, you know, it's like you're letting your baby, sending your baby to school. You don't know what's going on at school that day. You know, you just hope the baby comes home and helps you with more shoes, right? Like, that, that's kind of a little bit of, but you have to trust those teammates that they're going to get along with that right mission, that same mission, so that you know the baby's going home safe. Let's take one more question, and uh, you might stay here for the conversation with, uh, with Jason. Okay, one more question, I think. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so Collaborating. Um, how do you handle a situation where your team doesn't get along? Mm. Oh, um, you know that's a, any way I can. I mean, you know, I, I think I think what I'm I'm trying to learn to do is is really listen better uh, and not, you know, it's a constant struggle to to to, to like. 
again, push yourself a little bit more. Like you might think, you know, I have the experience. I've seen this. I know this is where we, we all decided we're going here, you know, like, but if something else, if something changes, um, okay, it may be a little bit of a shock to the system, but we still got business to do. Right? It's not, the, the show's not going to stop. So you're, you know, you can't, you could go through the project and be angry the whole time, right? But you know, I don't think you're going to do your best design work. I don't think you're not going to feel good about it. So for me, the quickest thing is to do is find a way to right the ship. Like if it's, if it really goes against your vision and you don't feel great about it, then you got to fight like hell, you know, honestly. And you may win, you may not, but uh, usually, again, if you're coming from the right place and that solution is is the one, like you guys will all get there. But what you can't do is do that on your high end. Um, so I, I always have a uh, an ally with me uh, for every project. And usually I, I line myself up with whoever, you know, my, my PLM is, which is product line manager, because they're in the business, they're with all these guys that are counting the beans, right? And so if they're, if they're in a, like, yo, this is it, and the bean counters are saying, we can't make that's too much, then he's going to be fighting for me on that front while I'm fighting for it on the design front. And, like, you, you've got those, um, you've got your army out there, you know, you've got to bring them along early. And that's that's really the only way to avoid that because if it happens late in the process and your team isn't, oh my gosh, the struggle is is awful. And it's just not a good feeling. And so you just got to write that shit however you can. I usually do a lot by just being very honest, emotional, and pleading my case as best I can. And that's, you know, I can be convinced, but you got to convince me. I'm not just going to like bend or break because, you know, you, you say something, it's like, yeah, we're going to need some data and some proof and, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you, you know, but, and the same thing, if I'm trying to convince somebody, it's not just going to be, hey, because I say so, I got to, you know, there got to be some data and some, some real stuff behind it and, you, you know, you kind of put your lawyer hat on, you know, and go to work in front of the judge a lot of times, but if you can get that out early, you know, I, I would encourage you to do so because there's definitely no way to work, nobody wants to work, you know, or frustrated. It has been so fantastic, so oh. inspiring. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, guys. So much. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, you can get the plan to go along and then you're going to become part of it. Would love it. Okay. I would absolutely love it. Okay, thanks for being here. See you guys next time. Thank you all very much. If anybody is here for RDSA, let's go ahead and move downstairs in room 128. So we'll give it like Thank you. Minutes, so. Please, let's look at you. You take them to whatever you need. Yeah,